I said, empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. It's about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. Join movement expert Aaron Alexander as he dives into the minds of the foremost innovative healthcare thinkers and movement masters on their approach to optimal health and wellness. Line Podcast. Welcome back to Line Podcast. My name is Aaron Alexander. In today's phenomenal episode, I got to have repeat guest, Miss Jaya. Jaya is a world-renowned expert in the world of all things sex, sexology, sexological body work, sex therapy. I don't know exactly what the best language for this is, but um, she is a serious badass with it. She co-teaches alongside Tony Robbins. She works with a plethora of various different celebrities and influential folks in the world of their lower regions. This conversation, we go everywhere from sexological fitness to anal massage to how to strengthen your vagina. Uh, Really good stuff. Super important conversation that uh, I think we need to have more of in this world. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in to the website, alignedtherapy.com. If you're drawn to that website, I apologize. I have these chimes that are just blowing up right now. You're all just going to have to deal with it. Um, alignedtherapy.com, A-L-I-G-N therapy.com. On there, you can start the five-day movement challenge. Five-day movement challenge uh, educates you on how to integrate optimal movement function into everything that you're doing. Day-to-day experiences can be a form of fitness if we got the baseline fundamentals on how to do it. Uh, thanks so much for leaving reviews on iTunes. If that is something that is inspirational to you, get after it. If we read your review, we'll send you out a box of something delicious from on it. Uh, review comes from Benjamin Como. Uh, super podcast, exclamation point, five stars. By far, my favorite show on iTunes. That's it. Simple review. This takes probably like 10 seconds, 15 seconds or so. This helps the show a lot, um, and we'll send you out some good stuff. So hit us up at Align Band or Align Podcast, Benjamin Como, and uh, we will send you out a box of something. I think that is about it. Um, Next thing coming up that y'all can come visit is I'm teaching a thing along with Aubrey Marcus here in Los Angeles. It is November, I think November November 10th. You can look it up on his page and uh, I would love to see y'all out here for that. All right, here we go. Back to the show with the beautiful Miss Jaya. Align podcast. I think it's good. (laughs) Yeah, we're good. Okay. We're in it. We're in it. All right. What the hell were we talking about almost? And then I we told were you talking to about shut the front door. Spit swallowing or squirting. No, we were talking about no? opera singing and oh, oral sex. Sorry, I went the other direction. Yeah, yeah that's okay. We can mm. we can digress and digress. Uh, opera and, singing and yeah. Look, it's like in bed with Jaya. We're in it. We're in it. We did it. We've arrived. We have. Thanks for doing this. There's chords. I know, that's okay. That can be interesting sex. It's I had virtual reality EMF. sex once and what was that, that like? was interesting. It was really interesting. Mm. Virtual reality. Uh huh. I see that pop up sometimes, and I'm like, uh, I'm always intrigued. Yeah, it uh, was. It was interesting. It was. I like to experiment and just try new things and do whatever, see what's possible with it. And I'm like glad I tried it once, but I kind of like real humans. What does it actually look like? But oh, I was, you're wearing I was, the mask. You're wearing the thing, and then oh, I was actually good. with a real human, like while it was happening. So he was seeing. He was wearing the thing. And then I had watched it, so I knew what the body positions were. And it's really trippy because when he's touching my body, in his somatic experience is of touching someone he's seeing, mm. not me. It was very, very trippy. Oh. So it's like having sex with someone else, but my body, I was like a stand-in body for the virtual reality sex. It's probably what a lot of people are doing anyway. Yep. Yeah, they are. A lot of, unco- <laughs> a lot of unconscious sex, you're Pretty right. Much the same. You're right. You've heard all that stuff around. I've been a stand-in body. You've heard all that life. stuff around like we can we can train our muscles just through thinking. So they have like there's different um this is this is kind of awkward with these headphones. That's okay. I'll figure this out. Um but you can actually train strengthen your muscles just through thinking, thinking about, about doing them. exercise. Absolutely. So they have different sites where they have like thumb exercises and stuff like that. It's not that much different than the people are actually doing the weights. So everyone think about your cock or your 
Can I say those words on this? Of course. I, I always forget which yeah. show I'm which show no, no, on. Don't. So yeah, everyone don't. think about your genitals or your pelvic floor. Maybe I should say pelvic floor, bulbal cavernosis, mm. bulbospongiosis. Maybe I should say those words. All of them. Maybe. I, I, I support all versions. All, all versions. Of anatomical description and on this program. We could just think program. about it getting stronger throughout the entire episode and, see, and do an experiment and see if at the end we all have genitals that are like. That's, le- that's legit. So how do we straight? Well. It was so opera and blowjobs was, was, was the big curiosity, <laughs> but that's an interesting thing as well. Um, strengthening the sexual organs, pelvic floor, stuff like that. Is mm-hmm. there's, are there's relevant conversations for such Absolutely a Absolutely relevant. Where do we start Completely with that? Completely relevant. Where do we start with that for men? You're going to start with that for men? Yes. Okay. And, okay. Is it this, and is it consistent with women? So there's, there's things in the genitals as far as like, if we're looking at wanting to have like superhuman, amazing, like genitals, right? Like you don't have to, I don't want to like say this, like anybody has to do any of these things, but I'm one of those people who's like, Oh, what can I do with this? Like, let's see what, like when I was 19, I had the goal of like being able to ripple my vaginal muscles, like, like people who can see this, like ripple them so that I, the guy never had to move. I could actually move my vaginal muscles, like in a ripple Mm. wave kind of thing. It's like, uh, what do they call that? Nowry? What is that called? Like a nally. A nally. It's like nallying with Mm -hmm. your vagina. Exactly. So I can nally with my vagina. Jesus. I could barely do it with my stomach, (laughs) let alone my my anus or my urethra. (laughs) So, um, you know, I've been a geek about this thing since I was like 19. As soon as I found out like, oh, there's like all this cool stuff you could do. So anyway, back to the question. Mm. Uh, I digress. Uh, so some of the things that we want to look for are not just strength. Cause as you know, with a muscle, if you over strengthen, you also need flexibility and resiliency and dexterity. And, um, I'm looking at multiple things. So we want lift and we want strength and we want to be able to push out and we want to have flexibility and we want to have resiliency of the tissue and we want energetic. So like all of that in, in the picture of it. And so it is like having a, like, if you're going to go to the gym, I actually have a spreadsheet. I could show you my spreadsheet. I have a spreadsheet for my whole vaginal workout Mm. that I do. Your your yoni plan, not noni plan. My whole yoni plan. And, uh, yeah, (laughs) not a noni plan. It is, and it is not a Volvo. It is a vulva. Um, so our nonis and and Volvos, you know, don't want to get those confused. I always mix that up. Yeah. I hate when that happens. Yes. (laughs) So, um, where to start, I would say is just with awareness, body awareness of what is happening in your pelvic floor. Most of us have what we call the genital hole in somatic sexology, which is where we are aware of some of our body, but the genitals are kind of like this offline area. It's like a black hole where we, you were having me shine a light earlier, like a proverbial light. Yes. Not so, literally a flashlight on your vagina. <laughs> Although I had a flashlight, but your eyes were closed. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did a professional session before this. Yes. For anyone listening. Very, we it wasn't very, about yes. anything that's, uh, Whatever. Yes. <laughs> we've got, we've gone now into the rabbit hole of Jaya's world into sexuality. I know. But it's all professional. It is. Yeah. Um, so at any rate, I would start with awareness of what it, what, what is, what's now with your genital area, with mm-hmm. the whole pelvic floor area, and then just start practicing isolating the muscles. So for men really focusing between the scrotum and the anus, like that area there, it's like the root of your cock. And so you're going to be just focusing on squeezing and releasing at first. Like that's just a simple exercise there to begin to feel it. And I actually like, 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 like touch the area so that you can feel Do you're you doing it. Me. Go for it. You Go can't for stop it. me, Jaya. Not that you ever I would. I love that I inspired you. You're very you. pro. <laughs> 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 this feels good. And so just like pressing your fingers a little bit in like a middle finger, especially like the fire finger hmm. and why do you call it a fire finger? It's so like the m- mudras, hmm. each one has a different element. Okay. So anyway, oh, tantric, wow. tantric stuff. Damn. You know, that tantric we got a stuff. lot of information to cover in 45 minutes. <laughs> so, we have. so, uh, if you just put your finger there and just notice, is it tight? Is it tense already? If you tense it and then relax it, can you isolate that? Or do your butt muscles get online or your thigh muscles or your belly button, your belly button, (laughs) your belly (laughs) muscles, what gets online and can you just start to isolate and then, and then play with 
One, there's the feeling of a squeeze. So that's more like bringing everything to the midline hmm. versus a lift, which is where you're lifting up the pelvic floor versus a push out which is where you're actually pushing out the pelvic floor muscles. Mm. And so this, just this kind of awareness and having the versatility of those three things, squeeze, lift, and push out, which a lot of people don't, don't pay attention to that, push out. Combine that with the squat. Really good flat-footed, like a flat-footed squat. Mm. Really good pelvic floor stuff. And then when you get really, really advanced, then you can get an erection and put a washcloth over your erection and lift it. What do you think about uh, <laughs> testicle breathing? Are you familiar with such a mm-hmm. thing? It's kind of what you're describing right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to describe it incorrectly, then you can correct. So I think it's something along the lines of you're like sitting on the edge of a bench, and you got your balls hanging, and you got your erection out, and you kind of pull the balls up. Pull them up. Doing mm-hmm. a similar thing. Mm-hmm. What the hell is that? So it's a similar, it's like the lift. It's like the lift. So it's just different. So there's a lot of different muscles we can isolate in the pelvic floor, but that's like one version of a lift is you're pulling up the testicles. My favorite one that I like to teach men is when they're laying on their belly, on their backs and their cock is here or penis, whatever word you guys would like to use. Breathe. If I use words that you guys don't like to hear. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> not, not a, startled. Oh my gosh. So cock. Oh, you want them um, to breathe. Like take I a deep, it. nice deep breath because sometimes when those words are said, like people can't stay in their bodies. Oh, I get so, it. you know, they leave, start leaving their bodies. So mm. just notice if you leave your body, when I say certain things that might be triggering. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. It's good for everybody. Okay, so if their cock is here, I'm going to pretend I have a cock. That's really hard to do with my hand. This is graphic. And <laughs> <laughs> this is what I do every day of my life. Isn't it great? I like it. Okay, so this is the cock. And what I want is the cock to actually lift like that. Oh, okay. So if someone has an erection, then their cock should lift. That's probably... When they're squeezing, when you, when that's just like a good indicator of, and then being able to hold it. What I see most people do is they like lift, but then they're like, ah, and it goes back down to their belly. So being able to like lift and hold, 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 and then release. Why does yep. this matter? Why does it matter? Yeah. Because we're building up strength in the pelvic floor muscles. And when you're weak, okay, I know, I know you know this, mm. like... People, you see older men get the shuffle walk. Mm-hmm. And Asian women. Mm-hmm. Nothing against Asian, but I think there's a, that's like an interesting thing where it's like, it's almost shameful to be like strong and empowered and like run really well. Mm-hmm. So sometimes there's you'll, a shuffle that's something walk. I've noticed. Hopefully mm-hmm. that's not racist, but I think it's a real thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you see them kind of like full gait galloping. It's like, no, 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 don't, don't do that. Mm-hmm. So the, the pelvic floor gets weak. Hmm. and brittle and as with age if people aren't working these muscles and we aren't sitting and squatting i mean we're sitting too much and not squatting and sitting properly as you teach Hmm. and so uh that gets weakened and erectile function so we want this for erectile function and we also want this for ejaculatory control so erectile function ejaculatory control and health of the pelvic floor to keep the muscles why does ejaculatory control matter and just that Mm-hmm. Why does it matter? Yeah. Uh, Is there any benefits beyond just being a better lover? Um, not that that's, I mean, that's, that's so pretty the, important. Yeah, I mean, there's, so there's the better lover thing. And again, like I, I don't like to put pressure on anybody that they have to do this because like, I don't really care as a lover, you know, like I'm just like, cool, you ejaculated. Let's keep going. Because to me, sex doesn't stop because somebody ejaculated. It's just like, cool, that happened. What's next? Because it's not all about intercourse. So Um, but for a lot of men, it is important to be able to last longer. Mm -hmm. A lot of them like to do kind of like the poundy thing and for their partner to be in like high pleasure and for them to have control and, um, having that also can help you to transmute sexual energy through the body. If you're practicing like a tantric or Taoist or something like that, where you're moving sexual energy through the body, you can do that. I don't recommend always abstaining from ejaculation because I think that there is a purpose and it can be a good thing. And there, there are studies that show that that is good. But what I think is more interesting is bringing the energy out of ejaculate so that it's actually circulating through your body, the energetic aspect of it. So that's something that I think probably 0.01% of people even like have an inkling of understanding Mm-hmm. You know, because I think it takes a lot of work to get to that point of actually being like, oh, I can feel I can something feel that. moving through my spine. Or becoming spine. multi-orgasmic. Can... Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
you know, so is there some kind of like beginning intro steps? So, so strengthening those mm -hmm. muscles and then what's next beyond that to start to kind of have that conversation of, of moving energy through the body. Yes. So yeah. moving it through the body. Um, I use, so there's different ways people experience it. That could be with breath. That could be with sound. That could be with movement. Like some people are just movement led. So they actually use movement to bring energy through the body and move energy through the body. Some people are like using their breath. Some people are visualization. So it's just like, I see purple and I move purple through my body. Yeah. So utilizing all of the different tools and then finding the one that like, oh, that really clicked for me. Um, I tend to be a feeler of energy. So I'm more kinesthetic where I can actually like feel it moving through my spine. I experience it as like a tingle or I'll experience it as like a, a wave moving through my body up my spine. And I also can use breath, breath a lot. So I use breath a lot and yeah. then I'll kind of go into movement as a result of that energy moving through my body. How do you describe that energy? Cause that's another one of those to use a triggering word, a triggering word, mm -hmm. um, I'm triggered by the word trigger. That's uh, why you I, are. I, oh yeah, I can't stand <laughs> it, but it's like appropriate sometimes. Uh -huh. um, so how would you describe that from a, without using the word energy, what is, what is that energy? So the way that I think about it, it's if I move it in more into like sensation and endocrine system, hmm. it can be a way to think about it of, I feel a sensation in my genitals and for the majority of people, that sensation peaks and especially male bodied people, it goes out of the body. Mm. I think female bodied people move it a little bit more naturally through the body. And so to me, it's like if we could just think of it in the frame of sensation as well, that that sensation that I'm taking all of that that's built up in the genitals and I'm starting to spread it and move it through my whole body so that it goes all the way to my pinky toe and all the way to the top of my head. So then I'm having more of a full bodied experience rather than a genital focused experience. Not that one is, I, heck, I like my genital focused experience. Absolutely. But I also love my full bodied. I like to have options. Lots yeah. of them. I can feel sometimes it feels like my cock is like a volcano. And it's just going to erupt. <laughs> <laughs> and it feels like all of the energy from the whole like Boulder, Colorado is like channeled into this one spot. And so figuring out, I just say Boulder cause we're in Boulder. Um, but so figuring out how to, how to move that out of that, I feel like that's probably where most men occupy maybe a hundred percent of their sexual experience is just like volcano of energy right there. Mm -hmm. And then that's the end of the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, is there any like laying techniques like laying techniques, like like postures that are better is it like better to be flat on your back is it better to be standing up sitting down is it depends like on anatomy so it depends on the cock and it depends on where the cock is going and mm. how it's being utilized so if we're talking oral sex that would be a different thing than say um and then you know some people have larger cocks some people have smaller cocks and i think a lot of men can get body like oh my cock isn't big enough and it does it's not the size, it's the arousal that matters. And it's also the an anatomy of the partner that matters. Mm. So the more aroused the female body is, the smaller, everything kind of gets tighter. So I often say like, really just do, do more arousal before you get to penetration and you're going to have a different experience right. than if you weren't, but then positioning can matter too. So like using pillows and that kind of stuff. So that's what I've, that's what I found in, my, in, in my very limited sexual experience is, um, I don't, I don't know what that was, <laughs> um, but <laughs> it's like, is that true or not? Um, but I have found that, um, through having more foreplay and through having like m just more beyond just like the act of penetration that helps almost disperse that Energy, energy out of the volcano into mm -hmm. the rest of the parts. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also not being like Jack rabbit, be Jack rabbit about it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's like obvious. Is there like breathing techniques or anything like that that you yeah, recommend? I, I love like all kinds of them. What do you got? Uh, my favorite transmutation breath to bring it through the body is just a deep inhale. Everybody can practice deep inhale and then draw up through the pelvic floor. So you're lifting the pelvic floor, you're drawing the belly button to the spine and you're dropping the chin back. And then you sniff and lift the chin and then you're exhaling it back down to the genital area. That's my favorite one. So I'll do that again so that everybody can follow along. Deep breath in, draw it up the spine. 
Contract your pelvic floor, draw your belly button to your spine, drop your chin back, lift your chin and sniff, and then exhale the energy back down. Does that work for women too? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, moving of sexual energy, that's like, uh, is it a similar female conversation? Female-bodied, male-bodied. I think female-bodied people have an easier time moving the energy through their body than, because uh, I think the people who move their energy out or sometimes female body people are very ejaculatory. They move their energy out more than up. So we kind of like, I know for me and my body, I will, I will kind of tense and draw everything up as arousal is getting higher, 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 higher. And then my <laughs> orgasm is like this intense kind of thing that kind of orgasm. Cause there's lots of different kinds I can have. But the, um, when I'm experiencing more of an ejaculatory orgasm, I push all of it out. Mm. Like I'm birthing mm. something out. Can all women ejaculate? If they have the plumbing. Yes. What's the plumbing? The plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> I should have done more research. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I say that because some women, you know, have hysterectomies or they had an injury or something like that oh. where things get removed. So, the vaginal canal, vaginal canal, mm. and then you've got the top of the vaginal canal is the urethral sponge. So up in here is the urethral sponge and the urethra, you know, for pee hole coming mm. out, vaginal hole. If you push up in there, that is what fills up with prosthetic fluid. And that's what is ejaculated out. So as long as there's a perineal sponge to play with, you can ejaculate mm. and there's all kinds of different techniques and stuff. what's like a time frame for people so i get a lot of flat because i talk about not ejaculating mm -hmm. um and so i've had a lot of people be like all right well that's ridiculous mm -hmm. um so i usually temper it to like twice a month you ejaculate twice a month yes awesome <laughs> so you you've trained your body to have control <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm doing much better than previously. And mm -hmm. yes, I'm not 100%, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm doing doing all right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And are you transmuting the energy, meaning you're like moving it through the body or are you? Sometimes better than others. I found meditation to be really helpful, um, mm -hmm. specifically Vipassana meditation, another thing that I'm all hot, hot and bothered about and talking about in here a lot. Um, because it, it's the whole practice is, is feeling sensation in all different parts of your body. Mm -hmm. Um, so spending, you know, in this case, 10 days, but hopefully like lots more time than that, just feeling sensation in all the different parts of your body. And then you start to feel sensation through the body and you can feel sensation. Like you know, it's, it's really interesting. It like actually, you know, it, it, I wasn't expecting for it to happen the way mm -hmm. it did, but literally feeling sensation into organs and all the way into the backside and, um, with that, I actually found that really helpful with feeling um, this similar sensation from sexual arousal start mm. to start to move through, and I'm still working on it. Like awesome. the like the full like uh, oh I, I just jokingly talked about it earlier before. What's the this the sacred circle, the governor channel, and the the conception, conception vessel, channel, the microcosmic orbit. Microcosmic orbit, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I can't honestly say that I'm like, you know, merry-go-round like microcosmic orbit, mm -hmm. you know, up from the can you explain that as well? Like what the, the hell that is? The orbit. Yeah, so, or yeah, your perception so the, of it. I feel it as a circular energy in my body that flows. And uh, um, I can kind of play with play with it. It's like, to me, like sometimes energy is like dental floss. Mm. Like, you know, that satisfaction, like when you get a good piece of floss in there and you're like flossing it out. Right. I experience energy that way. So like I experience it like like something's flossing mm. and it kind of comes around like, I f like as if I had a piece of string and I could just kind That's of like how they move describe it. it like that. They do. They describe that in the Vipassana too. Oh, really? Can you put this thing more, more like yep. up in the face? I feel like I got to get it up in my grill. Oh, there you're in. There. Whoa. Jesus. How's that sound? Damn. Yeah. Is it sexy? Like Is it that. hot? I like, I like it when it's like, I like that it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit phallic shaped as well. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> I have a really big mouth. I can do weird things. <laughs> really? What yeah. kind of things? I can fit my whole fist in my mouth, but I'm not going to demonstrate it. I don't think it would be appropriate for this program. It's like a snake <laughs> where I could like dislocate my jaw and just like stick my fist in there. Well, and then when I was a kid. How'd you discover uh, that? Uh, I, don't, I, I did strange things. I was like a child I'm actress and I was really bored on set. And so I would do really strange human tricks with all the other board kids. Mm. And one was getting rid of my gag reflex when I was like 13. I was like on set and th these other kids were like doing it. And I was like, okay, I can get rid, totally get rid of my gag reflex. 
and I just would sit around and practice and play with my uvula. Mm. I like being smart. Uvula. I like saying words like uvula and bulbo cavernosus. Did you know things like that, that you can see someone's uh, the the function of someone's? You, you mentioned polyvagal before. Mm-hmm. You can see the function of someone's uh, uh, nervous system. See if they're in more of like a, a ventral vagal mm-hmm. toned state, which is ventral is the front side. That's like an indication the person's feeling like healthy and socially engaged and all that stuff. Um, you can see if those they're called the pharyngeal arches right beside the uvula. If they go. Uh, 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 yeah, I wonder how mine are going. Uh, 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 uh-huh. you go like that. You open, put the tongue down. You should see those arches be able to kind of like move. Yeah, yours yeah, are moving. Uh-huh. Good. I'm in there. Uh-huh. I'm socially engaging. Uh-huh. Um, <clears throat> and so if a person is a little bit more maybe like a spinal sympathetic or like a fight flight place, uh-huh. uh, or maybe like a dorsal vagal tone place, which is like the freeze area, uh-huh. um, then then you will see oftentimes like one lifting and maybe the nod or maybe neither. Huh. So it's like that. Okay. Now I, now I have to have you look. Yeah. Let's check it out. Let's okay. see, let's see what's going I have on. huge circumvallate papillae, but sometimes I'm a little, Damn. um, you know, Those words. sensitive about, <laughs> <laughs> I want to see. Okay. I'm so ready. how did you do it again? So you go down. Oh, so the people do this at home. Everybody so, do it. Uh, oh, here you are. Uh-huh. 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 I'm uh-huh. licking the, I'm then, licking the mic. That's okay. Right. I'm completely okay. fine with that. Uh-huh. The mic's worth more now. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Just uh-huh. leave the tongue down in the bottom of the mouth. Yeah. Uh-huh. Then you're like, yeah. And all up. So you can see it. So you can look in the mirror, people. Uh, and then just go, ah, 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 ah
And that's really fascinating because once you get that relaxed, everything in the body starts to relax because all the sphincters are all in line together. So that's just something that I thought the thing's very interesting about the nervous system and all of it tying into our sexuality is when we can relax and open up that part of the body, it starts to open up everything in the body. Mm. But if we close that down, it closes down everything in the body. Mm. So feeling safe is really, really important when we're in sexuality for our body to fully open. And I think most people have never really experienced their bodies fully opening in a sexual experience. Mm. Like really, really opening. How do we get there? <laughs> <laughs> Three to four hours of anal massage. A day. Really? No, <laughs> it doesn't take that much. But but getting anal massage is one way. You know, it is definitely, and it was a it was an edge for me to experience that and have that done in my own body. I'm much more of a giver of that. But to to experience that and have that done. I mean, my first anal massage, just someone holding and my body just shook for 45 minutes straight and just like releasing trauma. Mm. And I, cause I couldn't do any more. I was like, just hold still. That was like all I could tolerate. And then as time went on, the, I think I came back the next year and I was the demo model for the anal massage. I was so proud of oh, myself you're back in there. to be the demo model. You're in the cockpit. Yes, I am. <laughs> So yes. What about techniques for animal massage? How do we get started with that? Um, well, my favorite one is this paddle thumb one. Oh, oh, paddle thumb. Paddle thumb. That's good. Yeah, paddle thumb. Can you do that to yourself? I don't know. I don't. I, I think I can. I can. Do you recommend? I can do it to myself. Do you See? recommend <laughs> men uh, having vibrating? Uh, apparatus for their anus? I recommend... <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you say it? <laughs> vibrating apparatus. Vibrating apparatus for the anus. Yes. Of the man. <laughs> That's right? the word for the day. That's vibrating apparatus for the anus. Um, it depends. So I, I talk about erotic blueprints a lot. The energetics, the sensual, the sexual, the kinky, and the shapeshifter. And I think each one of, depending on your own body map, you're going to want a different kind of toy. So, you know, looking at like a crystal butt plug, for example, for maybe an energetic, cause they're going to feel st a stone or they're going to resonate more with something like that, or just doing some energy work with that area of the body. Um, sensuals may enjoy something that's soft, like a silicone, um, prostate massager, something like that. Mm. Sexuals may like all the shebang with like a massaging, vibrating whole thing going on. And then kinkies might want something more, um, bigger black, you know, it doesn't always have to be bigger and black, but could be cause I've seen butt plugs that are like this big. Jesus. Yeah. I'm holding my hands very big. Those it's are very you large. Cannot, cannot You're see. But the, I worked, <laughs> I worked for a company that was, um, the largest sex toy company and they had a butt plug that was this big around like wow. gigantic. It was this big, gigantic black butt plug. Jeez. And so it was like, kind of like they had a whole bunch of these gigantic butt, black butt hut plugs. So I think of kinky when I think of that, because I think of pushing edges, stretching edges, yeah, really, you know, stretching, stretching literally. It, so I read a thing, um, about gay men that are on the receiving end have significantly less instances of prostate cancer than, uh, folks that don't get mm -hmm. some That's because type they're of getting... apparatus. eye. They're getting the massaged. Meters. Yes, they're getting so, massaged. So does that mean that everybody needs to put stuff in their butt? Yeah. Jesus. The <laughs> anus is a place of equality. This is going to be it a challenging a, podcast to listen to, I think. We have an anus. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going too far? No, it's perfect. Okay. Uh, everybody breathe. So you, breathe in your anus right now. Like, oh, yeah. do a nice, big, deep anal breath. Yeah. That's important. It is. All right. So we should, we should be getting vibrators for our butts. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if you're a sexual type, especially. <sighs> yeah. And I think a lot of ma male bodied people have some things around, oh, does that mean I'm gay? Does that, you know, like that yeah. kind of stuff comes up and absolutely not. The, the, anal, the external anal tissue is second only to the clitoris and the amount of nerve endings in the body around pleasure. So hmm. We are actually wired for pleasure in that area of the body. It's part of our pleasure. It gets engorged with blood, you know, it arouses. So there's a teeny tiny little bit of lubrication. So lubricate that area. Don't not do it without lubrication, but. Hmm.
wanted to take a quick moment to thank the Align Band for supporting this podcast. Align Band is a rad self-care product created by yours truly. I use it with every one of my clients, uh, friends, family. I take it with me anytime I go on any type of traveling trip. Uh, highly recommend getting a resistance band in your life, even if it is not the Align Band. Uh, get yourself a resistance band. This guy comes with a door anchor, a traveling case, so you can hang it up on any hotel door, uh, car door, anywhere. And then you have a band hanging, so you can start mobilizing, opening up your hips, opening up shoulders, opening up the ankles, lengthening your neck, whatever you got to do, you can do it with the Align Band. Um, you can find it at aligntherapy.com slash gear. That's aligntherapy, A-L-I-G-N, therapy.com slash gear. It's also on Amazon, all those different places. Thank you so much for swooping that thing up, if you are called, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the episode. Yeah. I like that. Are there any other exercises that transcend... Um, like sexual practice that are good for sexual practice. I guess breath would obviously be the mm-hmm. one, but like, is there any kind of like fitnessy related things? You're like, this is really good for your sexual squatting. Organs. Squatting's okay. great. Um, there's something called hyperpressive, hypopressive exercises that I just got into, which is really pulling like the belly button towards the spine. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a great video I found on YouTube. I don't know how it's still up there, but it's actually like a close up on a woman's vaginal canal. And, um, they show her like doing a sit up and you can see like the vaginal canal open up and kind of everything prolapse, like the organs and everything, like you can just see like everything not in a healthy experience. And then you see the hyperpressive exercise and you see the vaginal canal, like get smaller and everything lift. Mm. And I'm like, Oh, that's amazing. So I've been kind of getting into that and starting to learn more about how to do those exercises. Can you see shame contract tissue? Absolutely. Hmm. Absolutely. In the moment, you hmm. know, because when I'm working with a body, I can, I can feel the shame in the tissue. You know, it's like the tissue hardens, it contracts, it doesn't want me to be there is the, the, the message. Um, or it gives up, it loses all tonicity and it goes into a complete like give up. That's the same thing that a, a zebra does. We were talking about the polyvagal stuff again. Mm-hmm. That's what a zebra does when it, it feels like it's, it's, you know, it's caught. It's going to die. Yes. Yeah, so that's like its last mm-hmm. resort is like, okay, if I just, and that's, it's called, it's called uh, dorsal vagal tone, the back, the, the back side of the vase. Um, when he goes into that place, it's like, that's your last resort. It's like, maybe he'll leave me alone. If I play dead. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. people that, um, in rape that happens as well, mm-hmm. I believe. It's mm-hmm. like you kind of, you fight, fight, fight. And then it's like, once you're like, okay, the best thing is to, 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 to check leave. out, to mm-hmm. leave the room essentially. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then I wonder if, uh, how that trauma or, you know, whatever the shame or trauma, whatever, whatever you'd label it, how that, how to work with unwinding that from the body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, when it comes to any kind of trauma that we experience, and I think we all have trauma around sex, it's, we get, we just have offenses that happen to us sexually throughout life. Um, from everything from being called a name to somebody who touched us and we, we didn't want to be touched or we were looked at, or there was an energy. I mean, I think all the different blueprints experience this differently, the trauma, um, when it comes to unwinding that, I really recommend working with a practitioner because you, it's really beneficial to have someone to hold space for that, especially someone who's trained in trauma. So like somatic experiencing Peter Levine's work. I don't know if you're familiar with yeah, that. Yeah. Waking the tiger. Um, yep. Um, I, uh, sexolo- sexological body workers, people who can help hold space for and help you unwind and educate your bo- yourself about your body. It's really a client led approach there. Um, and then if you are doing things at home, I, I just come back to awareness, 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 really just like holding yourself, like just put your hand on your genitals and meditate Mm. with your hand there and just see what, what do they have to say? What are they angry about? There's a lot of angry genitals in the world. Mm. It seems like acceptance is a big thing. Acceptance, accepting yourself, compassion for yourself. Um, and, and I think on a mental, um, you know, emotional level, Being in erotic community is incredibly healing because you start to feel like I'm not alone. That person likes to be tied up too. That person over there likes a doggy style. That person over there likes to do it 10 times a day. Like there are there, I have seen everything and being around other people, you start to go, Oh, my desires are not so weird. And that's the message that I really want to give people is you're not broken. You're normal. 
and you're enough just the way that you are. Hmm. Could there be a point where it goes to the other end of the spectrum where it's like people are maybe enabling each other and they're like addicted to this thing and it's, and it's like another form of escape that mm-hmm. they, they put like sexual exploration on or is that not? not yeah. I mean, I think this is where it comes down to what is the consciousness around your sexuality? How are you utilizing sex? What are you using sex for? Is it, is it like a drug where you're using it to numb out or not feel, or are you using it consciously? You're like, I'm owning this. This is for my pleasure and I love pleasure and I want to be in pleasure. Like for me, I like to be in a high turn on state. I like my body to experience a high turn on state. It doesn't take a partner for me to do that, but that could be part of it if I wanted that to, to happen. But I like my body feels really good when the horm- when my hormones and I, I just feel alive. Yeah. And as long as it's not detrimental to my life or like I'm just sitting around diddling all day and not getting <laughs> stuff done. <laughs> flicking the bean. <laughs> I'm flicking the bean I'm just all day. Sitting around flicking the bean. <laughs> you know, I got work to do. I got work to do. I got work to do in the world. <laughs> um, so, so there, there's that piece of how are, how conscious are you of how you are utilizing your sexuality? How are you, you know, what are you, are you giving up things in order to get something Are you, um, doing it because you truly want to, and you, this has been something just in the last, like maybe three weeks I've really been looking at, which is I started, I couldn't sleep one night and I was just up and all of a sudden I started feeling grief was just moving through my, I had this pain in my body and then I just grief started coming through and I was like, what is it? Like, what's the grief? And the grief was for all the times that I had opened my body to a man and then got dropped afterwards. Mm. And it was just like, oh my, I could see it like moving through my body. And then I could feel like I'd see each incident, mm. like, like all the artifacts of it in my body and just all the grief and the sobbing. It just started all releasing from my body. And then I made a vow with my body. Like, okay, we're not going to do that again. Like from now on, we're going to make sure that we ask to be held afterwards and what that looks like. Like, right. does that look like a phone call? Does that look like a, a card the next day? Like, what does that look like now body? What do you need that would have you feel like you're being held after a big somatic opening? Hmm. I like that. Yeah. Um, we got to wrap up. You got children to feed and games to play with them. And I know and I go from various, sexologist to mom. Things, mom. <laughs> um, the one, one day I'll, I'll have to talk about my orgasmic birthing experience. Have oh, you ever yeah. talked about that? I wonder, well, yeah. there'll be part like four and 12 of this. I'm sure. <laughs> um, the last thing I wanted to, to mention, cause I was, I was being a bit selfish towards like men. Um, is there some ways to maybe increase the orgiastic experience for women? Is that a word? Orgiastic? Orgiastic? Orgastic? Orgy, orgy. orgy is like when you have sex with like lots orgiastic. of people. Orgiastic. That's or not a is word. It, or is it like orgastic, like orgasm? Static? Orgiastic. Is that not a word? Orgiastic would be Shit. like lots. I don't know. We can make it up. We can make it a new world. I'm new word. Look, I'm orgiastic. Like lots. You're just having lots of lovers. That's how I would say it. That's not what I meant though. You mean like orgasms. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Orgasmic. <laughs> Orgasmic potential. Yes. Is there some way for women to be practicing enhancing their orgasmic potential? Yes. If they want to. Oh. And again, I want to come back to nobody's broken. Nobody's wrong. When you hear me talk about all the crazy orgasms I can have, it doesn't mean you have to have them too. Like everybody who's listening, like you are fine just the way you are. And if you want to experience all that is erotically possible, here are some things you can do. Is there any basic bare bones? <laughs> we got to wrap up. This yep. is, the, this is the end of the thing. Yep. Basic bare bones. Basic this bare would bones. come down to your blueprint again. If I'm sure you're going to have in the show notes somewhere, a yeah, link for yeah, them for sure. to like fill out the blueprint quiz. So you guys can go for free and go fill out the blueprint quiz, find out what your blueprint is. Cause that's going to determine what your orgasmic superpowers are. And I talk about it on all the videos. Hmm. So, um, orgasmic superpowers could be, I can have orgasms without anybody ever touching me. So you could be 30 feet across the room and I can have an orgasm, which is an awesome superpower to have very easily orgasmic. Um, the wind can blow the right way. Sometimes that's a little annoying. Mm. Um, (laughs) I was getting waxed and the woman hit me just like I was getting a bikini wax. The woman hit me just the right way. And she's like, Oh my God, your pelvic floor is contracting all over the place. And I was like, (laughs) 
because <laughs> she just hit me the right way. It caused me to have an orgasm. Like, is that something that you have had throughout your whole life or did you start from a place? Of, no, I of, cultivated it. You really did. Mm-hmm. Consciously cultivated it. Daily practices. Because isn't there like a condition where you like are excessively yes, orgiastic there... to use my language <laughs> that it doesn't exist and it's actually like a real problem? There is. And it's actually quite a serious problem. It's like the nervous <laughs> system is always orga- like you're oh. always orgasming like it's it's intense it's actually that's actually a sympathetic state i believe like mm-hmm. to have you know the nervous system's kind of stuck in orgasm yeah yeah, yeah it's hard to function yeah so we gotta wrap up i know so many we'll do questions it again. we'll do we'll do more um how do people find your stuff where's where's the what's where do people go yeah oh, erotic breakthrough.com i think it's i do we have like a special url you'll put it in the show notes, put in the show notes. so okay, that's then. the um place to find me for all the quiz stuff and the blueprints and all that fun stuff cool. and then if you just want to find me online it's jaya.love and jaya spelled j-a-i-y-a sweet i love doing these they're so fun. I can't wait for the next one, whatever that is. And maybe I'll see you in Costa Rica. Maybe we'll do one in Costa Rica if I end up. I don't know. From live from Costa Rica. Live from Costa. All right. Over and out. Done. Align Podcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning into that conversation. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. There's some ways that you can support this podcast, one of which you can pick up an Align Band, which is a heavy duty resistance band, it comes along with a door anchor and a carrying case, and a video guide on how to mobilize those joints and integrate that body of yours. Really great stuff. You can be found at aligntherapy.com and also on amazon.com. Um, Thank you also so much for utilizing the Amazon affiliate link on the right-hand sidebar of the podcast page. Bookmark that thing. Anytime you purchase some crap on Amazon, purchase that crap. Through that link, we get a percentage of it. costs you nothing. And I think that's enough. Thank you guys so much for reviews on iTunes. Thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Pow.